So in the <coughs> opening of uh, the, the fifth seal, verse 9, chapter 6, chapter 6 of Revelation, verse 9. I could go through all the seals, but I wanted to save some time here. Uh, verse 9. When he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain. In other words, these are people that have died. Slain. And in the Bible, there's two ways you must use that word slain. One is when you deny the human self nature, which is called the beast in the Bible, your nature, your human nature, your Adamic nature, your self life is called, and I can give you many scriptures on that, um, is called a beast. Um, it is, it <coughs> must be slain. Self must be denied. Um, <coughs> that you can use Proverbs 9, just one scripture, and one on that. Wisdom hath built in her house. She has slain her beast. Wisdom. So the wisdom of God must slay the beast. And uh, then I can give you another scripture that makes that plain. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. A man hath no preeminence over the beast, as one dies, so dies the other. See, as they all go to one place. Man is likened on a comparative level with the beast, because that is, he's without sense to God. He doesn't have sense to God, so he's a beast. Uh, a beast does not have any sense of God. A, a man is likened unto that. They all die. We have one breath. Uh, they have no preeminence over the beast. So these scriptures, then, when we look at them, the, the seal, it said, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain. Now, the other way slain is used is go back up to verse 8, and it's used as martyrdom, or the taking of the life of a believer by an unbeliever. That's martyrdom. When, a, when a, the life of a believer is taken, the physical life, by an unbeliever, as millions of saints have been slain, read the book, Fox's Book of Martyrs. It tells about millions of people slain in the centuries of 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th century in Europe. Europe was bathed in blood from those that opposed the system that ruled Europe that, at that time in religion um, at the Universal Church. So he said in verse 8 that power was given unto the element of death and hell over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. That was martyrdom taken place, taking place in those centuries, called the feudal system or the serfdom of, of, of Europe. Uh, that was the Dark Age period before the Renaissance period. And so you saw this, that that's the way that slain is used. Now, whether or not we're looking at verse 9, in that man denied self-nature and slayed his beast and was slain, or whether we're looking at martyrdom, it doesn't really matter. This is the dead in Christ, the dead in Christ. They're physically dead in Christ, and they are, they are slain. And the scripture said they were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now they were slain, they were dead, but they lived because the next verse shows they were a living soul. That's why I fully believe, endorse the teaching 
that the soul of a righteous man, the soul of an overcomer, the soul of a godly man or woman that is dead to the old man, the old nature, the self-life, does not die. Amen. The, the body dies. The physical body dies. But in Revelation 6, 9, and 10, 8, that's where we are right now, the soul lives because they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And, conjunction, and white robes, clothing or garment or attire, uh, righteousness, because the righteousness of the saints is as fine linen. And it clothes the saints. Fine linen. That's robes. That's the garment of an overcomer. The garment of a righteous uh, man or woman. White robes or righteousness was given unto them. And it was said unto them. All these unto the altar now. And the altar is Christ. So where does the soul, where does the saints go? Where does the overcomers go? They go under Christ. Now, Jesus said in John 14, in my Father's house are many robes, are many houses. A house clothes you. A house is your shelter. A robe clothes you. It's the garment of righteousness. In my Father's house, in my Father's wardrobe, in my father's closet are many houses, many, much clothing. And, and he said uh, that uh, and I go to prepare a place for you. So these souls of the overcomer, that their body is dead, whether it dies physically in martyrdom, or whether it just dies of old age, or disease, or illness, or whatever, their soul does not die. <laughs> That's why I don't believe for a minute this doctrine that the soul dies, there's no ground for it, there's no proof for it of a righteous man, of an overcomer. I do believe the soul of the ungodly dies. The scripture teaches the soul of the wicked dies. Body, soul, and spirit. Um, the soul of a wicked man does not depart into a burning oven of fire where he's roasted and toasted as a marshmallow on a stick. God does not punish that way. When you read the term hell in the Bible, <clears throat> that's another subject, but when you read the term hell, always remember that hell is torment or judgment, and God deals with that in the living not the dead. He deals with that in those that live. <coughs> Excuse me. Brother Marlowe, does, does, does Psalm 1 tie in with that? Uh, Psalms 1. It does, <coughs> yes. Yeah, the Psalms 1, uh, the right, the, 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 the wicked and the ungodly are like the chaff. The They're not so. In other words, they don't exist. <laughs> Um, God does not, I teach hell, I teach the doctrine of hell. I do not teach it as the church world teaches it. That is a place where God takes pleasure in tormenting people after death, souls. Uh, God takes no pleasure, said he didn't, in the death of the wicked. Even the death of the wicked, God does not take pleasure in it. When you read, and that's another subject, just touching it, when you read the subject of hell in the scriptures, it always deals with that excruciating part of life, pain, suffering, torment, which is on this earth, not in the grave. Because in the grave, the book of Ecclesiastes said, 9 and 5, Ecclesiastes 9 and 5, the living know that they shall die. I certainly do. 
but the dead know not anything. So how could they be in a place that's heated seven times hotter than any fire and be screaming and remembering their past life and being tortured over and over by God? How could they be if they know not anything? Then he said there's no wisdom in the grave. So how could they remember their loved ones in the grave? How could they remember those that live on the earth in the grave when there's no wisdom in the grave? There's no work in the grave. How could they be bitterly repenting of their sins in the grave when there's no work in the grave? of salvation or of judgment. Because, uh, so, where does the soul then of, of the righteous go? That was the question, the saints. I just dropped that other in on the subject of hell and judgment. Um, where does it go? Um, it goes under Christ, where Christ is, under rulership, lordship of Christ. And that would be in heaven. That would be in heaven. Uh, that is the place where they are. They are there. They have new bodies, angelic bodies, celestial bodies. They're clothed in the garment of righteousness, white robes. They have another house, 2 Corinthians 5, not made with hands, another house, another covering, another body, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, there's the glory of the celestial, that's heavenly. There's the glory of the terrestrial, that's earthly. Uh, uh, each one has its glory. The glory of the resurrection is one. The glory of the overcomer is another. Yeah. Celestial, the glory of the terrestrial, those that come from the grave, rise up in the resurrection, that's another. So um, the saints, are with, the overcomers are with Jesus. That's where they go. Shirley, does that help any, does that clarify any using Revelation 6 and 9? Say they're alive because they cry out. How can they say all souls die? You know, the teaching is now prevalent in many of the body churches. And many of the churches are called the body churches that accepted that doctrine. And that doctrine goes back to, to the teachings of Israel under the law. Yeah. They taught that there was no life, there was no resurrection of, of the Sadducees, taught there was no resurrection. The Pharisees taught there was a resurrection, but they taught that all souls died. Israel did not believe a soul <laughs> lived after death. So they go back and pick up a doctrine that is as going back to Israel under the law that the soul uh, does not live after death. When the Bible clearly shows in Ecclesiastes 12 that then the dust, that's this right here, this is dust. That's iron, yes, zinc, copper, you know, that's minerals. Oh, this is cellulite. And it's going back to the earth. That's where you find copper. That's, why you, that's, that's where you find zinc and these minerals and metals find it in the earth. Well, the earth, the dust, is going back to the dust. But the spirit, the spirit, return unto God who gave it. So it doesn't go back to the dust. If so be, it is in Christ. And so be, Christ is in the spirit. Yeah. Then it goes back to God who gave it. Alive soul. Alive soul. A, a living soul. And um, alive, so that said they cried out. So they have wisdom, understanding, intelligence under the altar. They cried out under Christ, Brother Jay. Uh, just for clarification, I walked in later. I apologize. But, uh, did I hear you say third heaven? Third? Are you putting the bride members, overcomers, in third heaven? I'm putting them in second heaven <coughs> with Christ. Okay, good. A condition. It is a condition. Under the golden altar. Under the altar the golden altar, because Christ is the golden altar. He's the altar of incense. And he is then shown in the, uh, that which we use for type and shadow, the tabernacle in the wilderness, beginning with Exodus 25. Read the 